Hi there everyone and welcome to the Novel Novel Strip Show, the channel where I discuss books and comics. And today what I'd like to do is hop back to June 2017 and do a wrap up of the books that I read then and see if my opinions on them have changed or stayed the same. Um, um, just changing the format of the video slightly, so previously I've given a summary of the books and then a novel fact before giving my opinion. Um, I've removed the novel fact element just because um, it took, um, I, I haven't had as much time to make videos recently and um, so this one's up later than I would normally put it up. Um, and yeah, also I find it makes the videos that much longer. Um, so yeah, and I'm not too sure how much it adds. So I've removed that element of it so I can make it more quickly. Um, if you do miss it though, if you found it interesting, then um, please do let me know and I'll start doing it again. Uh, in the meantime though, let's just crack straight on. This was a really good month for me. Um, originally when I read all of these books, I rated all of them four or five stars on Goodreads. So quite excited to do this video. Um, but I will, even though there's there much of a muchness, there wasn't anything I disliked. I'll start with the one that I enjoyed least um, to the one that I enjoyed the most. Um, although like I said, these are all pretty much on an even footing. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with War Horse by Michael Morpurgo. Um, so for a brief summary, um, we follow Joey, who's a horse. Um, he's bred on a farm and he's very attached to uh, the farmer's son, Albert. Um, and what happens is the war comes, World War One happens, and Joey is sold to become an army horse on the Western Front. Um, but he always, you know, aches to go back to Albert because they formed such a strong bond and connection. Um, in terms of what I thought then, um, I really enjoyed this book. As I said, I enjoyed everything um, that I've read this month. Um, I think, first of all, it's definitely written for younger reader. Um, I don't believe Michael Morpogo does anything for adults. Um, a lot of his books are aimed at a younger reader. Certainly all the ones I've read have been. Um, having said that, I knew it was aimed at a younger reader, so I was expecting the language to be very, very simplistic. Um, even though books that are normally aimed at younger readers with simplistic language tend to annoy me and they're, they're not really my thing, um, I thought I'd give it a try. Um, and I'm very glad I did. So um, even though the language is very simplistic, um, and I did encounter some problems with that, um, so it made it harder to read quickly because there's um, important information conveyed in just a very small amount of words. Um, so I remember when I was reading, um, I had to keep stopping and going back and making sure I was reading every single word and sentence because um, it turned out that, you know, just in a, in a few words, um, a character had died and I'd kind of missed that. And then I was like, wait, what, what, what's happening? Um, and then I had to um, go back and read, oh, right, he's just died. Oh, that's really sad. Um, and yeah, not something I was expecting. Um, but um, despite that, I um, yeah, I think I even uh, enjoyed it more because that kind of simplistic narrative fits it being told from the point of view of a horse, where you know you'd expect the language used to be quite simplistic, etc. Um, so yeah, despite all that, it really did move me, um, and I um, felt a quite a strong connection to the characters. Um, and I do think it, it is a sad book, it's not um, a feel-good book, so um, yeah, bear that in mind when reading it as well. Um, but yeah, it, it was definitely very moving and I think that's quite impressive, you know, normally um, that kind of simplistic childish language um, really does put me off, so if you can write in that style but still move me um, and make me feel emotion, then that's something that really impresses me. Um, so I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars when I read it, and I think I would definitely keep that the same. Um, next up then, I read The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. Um, so for a brief summary, this is the first appearance of Hercule Poirot. Um, he, in the novel, is a retired police detective, um, but when a wealthy heiress is murdered, he decides to come out of retirement and kind of work privately to solve the mystery of her murder. Um, so in terms of what I thought about it, I really enjoyed it. I'm yet to read anything by Agatha Christie that I don't enjoy, to be honest. I find her works are very, very easy to read. Um, and if I'm in a reading slump, normally reading something by Agatha Christie um, or by uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, I, I find it a really easy way to get back into reading in general. Um, so, yeah, I think um, for me, anything by Agatha Christie kind of falls into the same category. I read it when I want something that's got a, a, a quaint kind of oldie worldy charm. Um, it's it's not like a modern thriller or anything like that. It's um, just, you know, kind of interesting. Um, and I think, for example, um, it's... 
yeah, it's really interesting to see where everything started in this novel. Um, I don't remember much about the plot, to be honest, um, which is fine, because if I did remember, I wouldn't be able to discuss it anyway. Obviously, that's the point of a detective novel. It's very much plot based. Um, but I definitely remember, you know, enjoying it and thinking it was a fun read. Um, I think sometimes as well, when you do read it, it because it works by Agatha Christie, don't have as many twists and turns and surprises. And they're not like a kind of um, psychological thriller type novel like most modern detective novels seem to be. Um it can be perhaps a bit underwhelming, um, but I, yeah, I definitely um, love it. And like I said, I appreciate it for that kind of old worldness and seeing what kind of, you know, she effectively started the genre. Um, and it's just, yeah, really pleasurable to, to read. Very um, simple to read as well, but not oversimplified oversimplified or anything like that it's not patronizing to the reader um so yeah i definitely enjoyed it um in terms of the plot though as i said i don't really remember much about it um i wonder if my brain kind of automatically forgets so that i can read her books again um and still enjoy them or if they just kind of blur into one anyway um but yeah, as much as I enjoy them, I tend not to really remember the plots afterwards. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but it certainly doesn't stop me going back and reading more. Um, and yeah, obviously this is the first appearance of Poirot, so if you were wondering where to start with Agatha Christie, um, I would say this is as good a place as any. But you can start with any of her books. I've read many other books um, other than... Uh, sorry, many other books before I read Mysterious Affair at Styles featuring Poirot. I haven't read any of her other works featuring other characters mostly it's just been well it's exclusively been Poirot up to now so um yeah if you've got any recommendations of anything else by her that I could read um that doesn't feature Poirot then I'd be very interested to do so it just happens that everything I've read so far has featured him but yeah great book um and I recommend it um to anyone who enjoys things by her and kind of older uh, sort of murder mystery type things um, next up then we have um, Gilgamesh, so this is the version I read was the um, New English Translation by Stephen Mitchell. So this is a, a new version and he, um, in the introduction which I only touched on briefly, he makes it quite clear that this is a version, not a translation because he doesn't speak um, Babylonian or Akkadian or Sumerian which are the three kind of um, languages that the original versions were written in. Um, so he's used other translations, um, from if I can remember rightly, just English translations. He's read many, many, many English translations um, and then formed a new version of the story um, using those translations. So he calls it a version rather than a, a direct translation because he's worked with other people's translations. Um, so yeah, it tells the story of Gilgamesh, the king of Uruk, um, and he goes on various journeys, but principally it's to um, find the secret of immortality. Um, so in terms of what I thought about it, again, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's, for one thing to notice, it's actually quite short. So it's a 292 page book. However, only 131 of those pages are the actual translation. Um, so the rest is introduction, which I didn't read um, all of. And then there's notes, which I did flip back um, to the back of the book as I was reading it um, when it was mentioned that there was a note. Um, and I found it quite interesting. There's also a glossary as well, which I think I did reference sometimes, but it's not an essential part. Um, but yeah, basically, it is going to be something you can read really, really quickly. Um, it is written in verse as well, so it's even shorter than a, a kind of 131-page novel would be. So it's a very, very quick read. Um, and yeah, overall, when I when I think back to it, um, what I remember enjoying most about it is the imagery and sense of colour. Um, colour is something that um, appeals to me a lot in terms of like the art I like a lot of the time it's it's very very colorful um, and so if a book can make me picture a lot of colors and kind of vivid scenes um, then that will very much interest me um, but yeah there's also kind of the, the relationship between people etc as well and, and family and things like that um, that's also interesting as well um, so yeah, originally I gave it five stars and I actually popped it on my favourite shelf on Goodreads. Um, I have removed it from my favourite shelf now, I think having read more it doesn't quite live up to some of the other books to um, deserve a place there. But I still really, really enjoyed it um, and I still definitely recommend it. Um, I think I'd probably give it a 4.5 out of five stars now. 
Um, so going in, I, obviously I've discussed in previous videos about enjoying getting into the headspace of characters and seeing things through their eyes. Um, however, I knew that this was a tale, it was a myth, so it was going to be more like a kind of fairy tale where it is just a kind of series of events, this happened and this happened, and it's not going to be a kind of modern novel where I could get into the headspace of the character. So knowing that, um, I wasn't expecting, um, you know, to, to, to have any kind of um, psychological aspect to it. Um, so yeah, I think it was really, really easy to read because of that, and it, you know, still very enjoyable just as a kind of myth or tale. Um, and what's interesting about this translation or this version, rather, by Stephen Mitchell, um, is it is written in verse as I mentioned earlier, but um, it's definitely not very contrived. Um, so I believe um, in the introduction, from what I can remember reading of it, um, he seems to have uh, promoted sort of. Um, sounds of words and the meter above uh, rhymes or anything like that so it doesn't rhyme i don't know if the original rhymes or not um but um yeah it was just very easy to read because uh, there were no kind of like hackneyed rhymes no sort of cliches um and it wasn't contrived in any way it was just quite enjoyable um and yeah so i definitely really enjoyed that um, I think it's interesting that it's, you know, the oldest surviving epic poem that we have. And this is a, a, a great version that I found easy and enjoyable to read. So I would definitely recommend it to anyone, um, especially if you enjoy, you know, like the Iliad, the Iliad and uh, the Odyssey, things like that. But it is much, 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 much shorter than them. Um, so in terms of epic, what we've actually got with this 131 pages probably wouldn't be classed as epic uh, nowadays because it's a very quick read. Um, moving on then to the penultimate book, that was Trainspotting by Irvin Welsh. Um, so this is um, basically written as a collection of sh short stories, and each of the t stories is written in a unique style depending on the character. So you always know who's speaking um, and who we're following just based on the writing style. Um, and it involves around a group of heroin users and their friends who also engage in destructive activities um, outside of heroin use as well. Um, so in terms of my opinion, I absolutely loved it. It's definitely a very tough going read in terms of the subject matter. Um, it is very, very dark, so I didn't always necessarily want to pick it up. If I wanted a kind of feel-good thing, um, I would end up not reading because I, I only read one book at a time. I find personally that if I, if I don't do that, then, for example, other people, uh, other booktubers say that they read several books at a time. They have different books for their different moods, etc., um, for me, I would just always go for, if, if I have the option, I would always go for the easy read, I would always go for the light-hearted thing, um, and I would kind of just end up never reading anything darker or anything that was a bit heavy or anything that was a bit more complex or difficult, um, and I know I'm very much like that, so I'd rather just stick to one book and get it done, um, but that did mean, unfortunately, with Trainspotting, sometimes I just wasn't in the mood, so I'd watch a film or something instead, um, so it did take me a little bit longer to read because of that, um, but I do definitely think it's, it's a very well-crafted book, um, so as I kind of touched on in the brief summary, um, it is written from each, sorry, each chapter, if you like, they're more like short stories, um, or like little vignettes, they're, they're written in a very specific style, depending on who it is that's, um, that we're following at, um, at that point, whose point of view it is that we're seeing the events through, um, and just, you know, from a, a sample of the text, if you took a, um, a chunk of text from the middle of, of each story, you would know who it was that was speaking once you were familiar with their speech patterns, etc. So I think that's an, an incredibly um, skillful thing to do, because it means you really can get into the, the headspace of that character and see things through their eyes um, and and envisage and excuse me, envisage them very, very clearly down to, you know, how their internal voice works. And um, so I really, really like that. There's also, you know, a range of different styles um, as well as different narrative voices followed as well. If I remember rightly, some parts of it are actually in third person rather than first person as well. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the, the kind of technical side of it, how it's written, uh, I think that it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, however, it did also move me as well, you know, although it's very, very dark, um, there are quite a lot of harrowing moments, and I think it's, you know, kind of gen genuinely um, human, um, and obviously the darker side of, of life and humanity is explored, um, but yeah, I think it's done 
very, very well. Um, also, I like the fact that, you know, it's set in Edinburgh as well, and I happened to live to Edinburgh. It wasn't part of my decision moving here, um, with train spot in mind. But, um, yeah, it was nice to, uh, for them to mention places that I could go and visit any time I wanted. Um, and, um, yeah, for example, they uh, when they're first trying to buy heroin, they go to Socton, which is where I lived, when I first moved to Edinburgh, etc. So, you know, things like that are kind of nice. Um, and yeah, have a have a, a personal connection there, um, because it just makes it seem all that more real. Although I, I should mention that, uh, yeah, Edinburgh has changed very much from the Edinburgh described in Trainspotting, so if you do read it, uh, don't let it scare you off or anything like that. Um, great, so on to my final book that I read in June then, that was um, Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. So for a brief summary, um, again, this is another kind of murder, uh, not murder, sorry, it's another mystery thriller, um, so I, I can't give too much about it away, but um, basically on their fifth wedding anniversary, um, a woman called Amy disappears, and her husband Nick, he's the person we follow mainly, and um, he's the main suspect in her disappearance. Um, so I really, really, really love this book. Um, a lot of people do compare the book to Girl on the Train, um, but I think this is a far superior book. It did actually come out first, but I think Girl on the Train might have started to be written first. I'm not too sure. Um, either way, I definitely think this book um, is a lot better than Girl on the Train, and I enjoyed it a lot more. Um, I think that's because it includes shifting perspectives. So we get um, Amy's perspective, we get Nick's perspective, um, and there's kind of more... Um, characters as well um that don't really feature in the plot so in girl on the train um you kind of have characters and uh, any of the characters that I mentioned they're just really relevant to the plot you don't really understand th about them as people whereas i felt like in um gone girl there's people who you're interested in them not just because of the part they play in the plot but because of the part that they have um oh sorry not the part that they play in the plot but because you can envisage them as humans and they're kind of well-formed humans. So they imagine you to imagine this, sorry, they allow you to imagine this world and, and you can see through them and, and care about them um, as people. I think that was the element that Girl on the Train lacked for me. It, um, it didn't have any characters that I was interested in just as characters or as people, or I didn't feel the connection with any of them. They were very much just there as almost chess pieces, moving about in a game, moving about in the plot, um, whereas with Girl and Train, I think the, they, sorry, Gone Girl, apologies, um, I think they were much better developed, and um, I could imagine them as characters, and therefore imagine being part of the world, um, and so I was more invested when it came to the actual plot, um, and so talking about the actual plot, then it's actually really difficult um, to say much about this book, because it uh, is largely plot-based, as well as having these um, characters that are slightly more developed, um, it's largely plot based and there are lots of twists and turns so without giving any spoilers away it's quite difficult to talk about um but um yeah with all the twists in it especially the kind of major twists near the end of the book i didn't see any of them come in i wasn't expecting them whereas with girl on the train um i yeah i just kind of yeah wasn't surprised when anything happened really um but yeah, this book definitely kept me gripped um, and kept me surprised as well. So it's something that I would highly, highly recommend. Um, again, gave this five stars originally and I would definitely keep it there as well. So thanks very much for watching. I'd love to hear what you think about these books if you've read any of them. And yeah, if you've got any recommendations based on this, please let me know.